Welcome to another in this series of Gematria goodies. Today I want to give you a rabbinic Gematria, which has a lesson for Christians, a very important lesson. So I want to go to the account of Jacob, who was 40 years in exile, and now he comes back to the Holy Land, and he's encountering uh, his brother Esau. And he sends messengers to Esau. And here is part of the message that he is, he's giving in Genesis 32 and verse 4. Genesis 32 and verse 4. And he commanded them, saying, Speak thus to my Lord, to my Lord Esau. Thus, thus your servant Jacob says, I have dwelt with Laban and stayed there until now. I have dwelt with Laban and stayed there until now. So that's how he begins his talk. He'd been living in exile for 40 years. But there's an interesting interesting uh, gematria which the rabbis derived from this statement. The rabbis have, have analyzed the five books of the law, the Torah, the Pentateuch, the Chumash, and they have the way they have broken it down, law by law, point by point, traditionally there are 613 commandments. 613 commandments, 248 positive, 360, thou shalt, and 365 negatives, thou shalt not. You know, now there may be other ways to divvy it up, but that's the traditional understanding. Uh, 613 um, uh, commandments. And an abbreviation for that in Hebrew would be to take the uh, letters that are numbers also in Hebrew and to make an abbreviation for 613 and that is Tav which is 400, Resh which is 200, Yud which is 10 and Gimel which is 3. So you come up with 613. Now we spare no expense to spread education and enlightenment so I have brought this aid here. I have this paper that I've written in ink uh, this abbreviation in Hebrew, Tav for 400, Resh for 200, Yud for 10, and then the hash marks indicating an abbreviation, and then the Gimel. This is, this is called in Hebrew, Taryag, the Taryag Mitzvot, okay, the 613 commandments, Taryag Mitzvot. Well, you know, it's interesting. If you rearrange these letters, you get the word Garti, the same letters are rearranged. Gimel, Resh, Tav, Nun. Gimel, Resh, Tav, Nun. You rearrange, the, rearrange those letters and you get Garti. I have sojourned. I have resided. I have lived in a certain place. And that's what Jacob says here. Let's go back to Genesis 32, verse 4. Jacob says in Genesis 32, verse 4, Emlavan Garti. I have lived with Laban. And so the rabbis have an interesting twist on that, interesting interpretation on that. They say, Im Lavan Garti, Im Lavan Harasha Garti. You know, it, with Laban the wicked, I lived. Vitariag mitzvot shamarti. And nevertheless, I kept the 613 commandments. Velola marati vimasav haraim. And I didn't learn from his wicked uh, ways, from his wicked deeds, I should say. And I didn't learn from his wicked deeds. So the Jews have, to have taken this uh, Garti, I have lived with Laban, and turned it around. Yes, I lived with Laban, but turn it around and you get Taryag. And nevertheless, I remained righteous, even though I was living in, you know, with Laban. And there's an interesting message there in that rabbinic interpretation. Jacob was living in exile, but in exile, he maintained his relationship with God. And God prospered him in that situation. He had his difficulties there, his trials and tribulations. But ultimately he was blessed and did return. And he returned greatly prosperous. And so God saw him through that. And he remained having a right relationship with God. And ultimately came to that confrontation with God where he wrestled with him in this chapter, uh, that, that uh, very the same chapter, Genesis 32. You keep on reading and you see what very possibly rep represents the, the uh, conversion of Jacob and his receiving of God's spirit if you keep, if you keep uh, reading. So Jacob was in effect in exile but remained a commandment keeper. And this is our challenge. 
we also are living in a spiritual exile until the second coming of Christ, until the messianic, until the messianic era. We're living in a world which is not grounded in Scripture, which is a mixture. You know, the Bible has its influence, more so or less so, depending on the society. But we're living not in God's world in this, in that sense, but we're living in a, in, in a world uh, which is a mixed bag. And yet we have to remain faithful to the standards in the Bible. So we are in the world, but we are not of the world. So if you go to uh, John 17, as Jesus prayed for his people, for the church, before his arrest, John 17, I want to go to verse 15. We are in the world, yes, but not of the world. We are different. Uh, John 17 and verse 15, he said in his prayer for his church, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. So what sets us apart from others is that we try to be as, as true as possible to the standards in this book. We're going to be accountable for what's in this book, and therefore it becomes our guide. Whatever society we live in, the scriptures be, is our guide. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. So we are sent into the world, to, in effect, to live with Laban and yet to remain faithful to Jesus Christ.